Hey everybody, welcome to Angler's Choices YouTube channel. I'm Matt from SB Fishing TV. I just got my new Ranger Z521 and we are gonna go drop it in for the first time. I'm extremely excited. The water looks great. I did get caught in a little bit of a rainstorm on the way here, unfortunately, but this boat's gonna be fished, so can't be scared of a little rain. And the most important part. So you guys know that I mainly fish out of a John boat. Launching them, pretty simple. Much smaller boats than a 21 foot Ranger. But what I'm gonna do to solo launch is just give myself five or six feet worth of slack on the crank here. I'm gonna let that hang so it doesn't drag on the ground and doesn't get caught on anything. And I've got everything unstrapped in the back, hit both of the tie downs. I took the transom saver off for the two little tubes that slide over the trim pieces. All that's done, I've got the boat loaded up with rods and tackle. Last but not least, and you can't ever forget this one, the plug. So I'm gonna go ahead and give myself some slack and we're gonna get this boat in the water for the first time. She's ready. Safety first, then teamwork. All right, well, we made it out on the lake. Pretty flawless self-launch, I'm happy with it. That is a beautiful view. Well, before we go run this boat, I'm gonna go ahead and set the Garmin trolling motor up really quickly. It comes with a remote, and that's what you need to use to calibrate it so you can use the spot lock and north heading. And then you can connect it to both of these graphs, and there's a ton that you can do that I actually don't even fully know yet, but I'd like to have a little spot lock action, so we're gonna set that up. Luckily, the guys over at Angler's Choice hooked up the pedal, so that works, but I would like to be able to use this remote too. So we're gonna pair this up. Turn the trolling motor on. Then we're gonna hit the power button three times and that'll set it into pairing mode. That little top right icon will turn blue. So now that we have that in pairing mode, we've got the remote on, we have to go into the settings. Remote control, pair. All right, it says we're paired up. Oh, we're paired. So now that I have the remote paired up with the trolling motor, I should be able to use anchor lock. Oh, I need to calibrate the compass. Settings, trolling motor, calibrate, compass. Turn the boat slowly in two full circles. Keep the boat level and steady while turning. Hopefully I can use the trolling motor for this. All right, it says we're calibrated. Let's test it out. Anchor lock. All right. I'm kind of blown away right now. I've never had something fully connected, trolling motor and two graphs. So I'm sitting at the console right now and I need to go back to the van to grab the drone battery that's charging. So I'm gonna go ahead and just test this thing out, so. I'm gonna zoom in here. We're gonna see if it can navigate us to this waypoint that I'm dropping. Okay, 385. And...
so sick. Well, I'm gonna go grab this drone battery and then we're gonna actually fire this boat up and do a little running and then we have to try and catch a fish. But I'm also gonna show you guys around the compartments and the space in this boat. It's just mind blowing that I'm sitting in this and able to use it right now. So very cool. We've gotten everything that we needed to get and now I think it's time to go drive this boat around and put it up on plane. I'm very excited. Gotta get my booster seat. I can barely reach the pedal. Make sure everything's away. Alright, let's go. Trim down all the way. I'm at a loss for words. Just <laughs> so, so nice. Rides like a dream. That was about 68 miles an hour, which is plenty fast for me. I don't need to go any faster than that. So now that we've got running the boat out of the way, everything seems to be set up properly. Let's go ahead and run through all the storage compartments. We'll take a look at the accessories that are on the boat currently. And then the only thing left to do is try and catch a fish. All right, so I've got storms on either side of me. The wind picked up like crazy, so I'm gonna hold off a little bit. I'm still gonna show you guys how this boat is laid out, how I have things set up so far, but while it's super windy and I'm waiting for these storms to pass, I'm gonna go ahead and fish a little bit, see if I can get number one in the boat. Healthy keeper sized fish. First one in the boat. Need a Texas rigged Z craw. Hopefully, his friends will eat too. But first, let me show you guys around this boat a little bit. All right, let's take a look around this boat. We'll start up at the bow of this Z521. Still doesn't. Yeah. English Choice through the Garmin Force trolling motor on here, and I've actually never used one of these before. Today is really the first time that I'm getting to use it and getting more familiar with it and comfortable. I've personally never had good experiences with any sort of digital trolling motor or anything that's not cable driven. I personally don't like the feeling of a digital trolling motor or one that has a separate or non cable driven foot pedal. Personally, that's just because they were slow they were unresponsive, and you had to look at the head of the trolling motor to look which way it was pointing, and Garmin seems to have figured it out. Foot pedal did take a little bit getting used to because it's a little looser than your standard cable-driven trolling motor, but it's perfect. I mean, I have no issues with it. I have no issues controlling it. It's super responsive. It's super fast, very, very powerful, and I don't know. I think it's just gonna take some time to give it a full review, but so far, I'm a huge fan of this Garmin, and I look forward to using it more. So along with the Garmin Force, we have the Garmin 126 Echomap Ultra, and it's awesome. I mean, for having the live scope on, it's better to have a bigger screen. It's gonna strain your eyes less. It's gonna give you a bigger picture overall, and it's just amazing through a 126 at the console as well. They're both networked, so if I drop a waypoint from something that I saw on the live scope, it'll pop up on the console graph and vice versa. And 
As you guys saw earlier, I connected the Garmin Force, so it's basically fully networked. So again, if I wanted to drop a waypoint or fish from this spot to 100 yards down the bank, I could drop a waypoint and navigate to that at whatever speed I tell it to go. Pretty neat. Let's take a look into these compartments, shall we? Rod locker. Don't pay attention to that. I didn't get any dock lines yet. When I showed up at the ramp, the only thing they had was an anchor line. But yeah, so this Ranger is equipped with rod tubes and the rod holders here. I think I gotta get a little used to it. That's something that I'm sure I will. If you guys have any suggestions on how you use these to maximize how many rods you can put in here, leave me a comment down in the comment section below. So behind the rod locker, I've got a cooler. On the step, we have another cooler. On this right side, we have a dry storage. I've got my Angler Aid box, which is basically a first aid kit. The top half of my rain suit, some shoes, and the fire extinguisher. Tackle storage. So much room, and it's actually pretty unorganized. I had to take everything out of the John boat and throw it in here for the next few days, but everything fits great. And I've got plenty more room once I've got things figured out, but there's so much room and I've still got more space to stuff more tackle if I needed to. I really like the dividing system that's in here for the 3700s. I mean, everything fits perfectly. And then, all right, that's a bit of a mess. But again, I threw everything from the John boat in here. Last but not least for the bow of the boat, the right storage compartment, huge, giant. If I uh, really needed to, I could probably pack a sleeping bag and roll up in there. But right now I just have a net, paddle, lights, and a way bag up in there. I can see myself using this for extra baits or camera gear, whatever it may be. Very cool. This is more space than I've ever had the opportunity to work with. Uh, I literally feel like I could move into this boat. All right, let's keep moving back. We'll start here on this second console. Nice little glove box, com stays completely dry. I've got the drone in there right now. Center console, perfect for throwing your phone, sunglasses, Garmin remote, a little bit of sunscreen. My friends, please don't forget your sunscreen. Got the live wells, huge. A little bit more storage in the back. Right now I've just got some camera gear, big old life jacket, and my Dr. Pepper can. So it's the same thing on the port side of the boat. And then finally, got your battery set up. It's a lot, it's very cool. I'm very excited about it. Oh, can't forget the powerhouse here. So this is a Mercury Pro XS OptiMax. This thing gets it going. It's a very, very big boat. I think it's 2,500 pounds, not including anything that's on it. So it needs a big motor to get it up on plane and just to get it going in general. It's the biggest boat that I've ever been in control of but honestly, it feels completely comfortable. Handles like a dream. I did do a little bit of controlled testing, we'll call it. I think that's super important. So when you're getting yourself into a new vehicle or boat or whatever it may be that you need to have control of, you need to put yourself in a controlled situation like out here on the lake today, there's no one out, it's completely clear. I know the lake, I feel safe. That's where you need to test your maneuvering skills, if you will. So. I think it's the best way to learn. It's the best way to be prepared for a situation if you need to avoid something or someone, feel it out, see how everything feels. So if you do get yourself into that situation, it's not something that's gonna be a first time for you. All right, you guys, that's where I'm gonna leave this one off. I'm gonna fish just a little bit more than I've gotta head home, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this walkthrough of the Ranger 521. I'm so excited to fish out of this thing. I can't thank English Choice enough. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button on their YouTube channel. Check out their other socials as well, Facebook, Instagram. And if you guys have any suggestions for what kind of videos you'd like to see, please leave them down below. Catch you later.